Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week, again, I got the chance to do a bit of a watercolor landscape painting. And I thought this week I would sort of go over my approach to watercolor painting. Well, actually this week and next week, I'm gonna talk about a couple of different things. And I thought it would be better to split it up over two, two weeks, two videos. So this week's video, I guess we start with materials i'm very briefly going to go over this because i've said this so many times but there might be somebody new so here's a, a 30 second introduction to the materials i use first of all the paper it is 100 percent cotton paper it's a watercolor paper it's made by a german company called hanemule you, i'm not saying you have to use that if you're doing watercolor painting it's just the brand that i use most often the paper itself has some texture on the surface, not a huge amount. So it's not a smooth paper, but it's certainly not a rough paper either. I only use one brush when I'm painting. Um, just mainly for simplicity and it helps with the spontaneity of the painting. So if you have lots of brushes, it's easy then to fall into a trap of, okay, so I painted this part, now which brush should I use for this bit? Or which brush should I use for that bit? When you, when you stop and start thinking like that, you're losing the spontaneity that you get when you're just painting, I think, anyway. So I prefer just to use the one brush, there's no choices involved, and I just keep going from start to finish, right through the painting. And it, I, I do think it makes the painting a bit more spontaneous. The style of painting that you do, you know, it depends. So the painting I do is quite minimalistic, quite simple. So therefore one, I can get away with using just one brush. If you're doing lots of details or you're painting very large paintings, it might be more difficult to use just one brush, but these are the choices that we have to make. The paint is Sennelier watercolor paint. Um, it's just blue and yellow, so a couple, two or three different blues. There's a Prussian blue, it's a very dark blue, old French ultramarine blue, and cobalt blue. And then the yellow is just um, cadmium yellow. And that's it really for materials. Maybe I should say also the brush that I use is a synthetic hairbrush rather than a natural hairbrush. Uh, it's a mop style brush and you can see it's not a, a huge brush. It's quite small, but then the paper I'm using is not very big either. I think when you're getting started, it's easy to get bogged down in these sort of details about materials and what colors you're using, what paint, what brand of paper. They, they do matter, but maybe not as much as people think. Um, I think when you're trying to get started with anything, watercolor included, the first step is really the hard part. It's just getting started. And if you bog yourself down into all these ideas of, should I use this or that, paint is best. You, all of these are obstacles that are gonna prevent you from actually picking up a paintbrush and start painting. And that's the main thing. Other things, well, they'll, you'll figure them out as you go along. It's really just, I would advise anybody who wants to get started with watercolor painting, just get started. Just start painting. Don't bog yourself down at all these little details about what brush, what size of paper, what size of brush, what, you know, what phase of the moon is best to start painting. Just don't worry about all these things. Just start painting. Other things you can say, so when I paint the sky, I paint wet in wet. So the top half of the paper is soaked. And you maybe noticed at the beginning of the video, when I put the pigment onto the paper, it was running down the paper. There was streams of water and pigment running down the paper. I like painting wet in wet for the sky. I like the sort of chaotic effects. I like the soft edges that you get with painting wet in wet. And the other effects like blooms and things that you can have. But for the bottom half of the paper, it's not nearly as wet. It is damp because you've got water running down at the start. 
And the difference is when the paper is drier, um, you have a bit more control. So when you put some pigment onto the paper, it tends to stay there. Whereas if the paper is soaked with water, when you put the pigment onto the paper, it sort of spreads out. And that's what gives you the soft edges and the blooms and things like that. So really two halves of the painting, top half, the, the sky, wet and wet painting, the bottom half, it's damp paper rather than wet paper. When I got started painting these watercolor landscapes, I was trying to recreate a sort of an impressionistic style painting uh, in watercolor rather than oil color that most of the impressionists used. Since then, I've sort of moved on. I've, there is still a, a bit of an influence from impressionism in terms of the bright colors and broken brush strokes and things like that. But mainly now is, I think minimalism has sort of crept in and taken over. So I go for very minimalist painting style, very simple compositions, very open compositions. And that's really the main influence on my painting at the moment, I think. I guess what I'm also saying is it's okay to change and develop. Um, you don't have to keep painting in the same style all the time. So if you look at a painting of mine, if you go back on YouTube and look at something from a year ago or two years ago, it, it looks very different or quite different from the paintings I do these days. Okay, well this is this week's final painting and I was happy with it. Like I said, it's loose, lots of broken brush strokes and things, uh, scratching out the paper, the use of wet in the wet for the sky, simple color scheme. Um, like I said, it's just blue and yellow. You get some greens because mixing happens on the paper. I don't do any mixing on the palette. It all happens on the paper. I like to keep things, as I say, as simple as possible. So there's no mixing on the palette. Um, just the one brush, just a four different colors, if you like, two, three blues. And just keeping everything as simple and minimalist as possible. And that, I think, helps the spontaneity in the painting. Okay, well, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. As I said, next week, sort of follow on a bit, talking a bit more about the sort of style of painting I'm trying to do at the moment. So thank you for listening and hopefully see you in next week's video.